just coming to the fun part of it that yesterday I had a lady just next to me and she said to his friend that uh, the lamb was tasty. The lamb was tasty. I, I was just crossing the, la the next room and at that point of time I felt that uh, again the biodiversity comes into picture here also. So you have a very diverse setup everywhere and, and you try to see the importance of the whole thing in the perspective that diversity is the stability of a system or ecosystem. Now there are two very major ways how you can describe uh, the biodiversity is that it is one is computable, one is non-computable. Now it has its own value. The computable value as Mr. Mukundan sir had said in the last session, there are three major atrocities that is the food, energy and water. Now food and water both are the basic paradigms or the uh, parts of the biodiversity which are being hampered with and it can be quantified. So I would just like to shift the discussion on the point that when we talk about that the biodiversity is such a complex system, we have ecosystem services coming into place and uh, a lot number of things, then why food and water which has become a very basic footprint for a sustainable development are again an integral part of the biodiversity. Now if you say that the impact of the biodiversity is on the community or on the nearby villages or on the nearby community, sorry, in the uh, regions, then what we see is that the, it has a localized effect, it has a national effect, it has a global effect. Now as companies, when we are operating in certain ecosystem, a small ecosystem, we also contribute to the diversion of the biodiversity and also we try to compensate it in a, way, a manner where, wherever it is possible and mitigate any of the issues. So just to throw a light on few of the aspects what we as a company have done at the la location which uh, we work with, that we have developed a unique nursery which is only for the endangered and threatened species of that locality, of that area. So we pertain from a region called as Bilwada. Now we have a typical species, uh, endangered species as per the IUCN list and in our nursery we are developing those species at the extent of 10,000 saplings per year. Now what we do with this, those kind of saplings is nothing but to again plant them on our, rehabilitated, on our uh, rehabilitation waste dumps. So when we say that we are trying to uh, improve the biodiversity in the nearby vicinity, but at the same time we are trying to create a new environment in the setup in which we are working. Just to again throw a light on again a small initiative that we took is that we have a good waste dump and a waste dump has only ample of rocks, it doesn't have any soil. Now when we have rocks, what we try to do is that we are developing grasses over the slopes. Now that is typically done by application of hydro seedings and geotextiles and everything. But when we talk about grass, the grass is nothing but it is the basic of the ecosystem. So that grass, it takes two or three years to develop, it has developed, it has gradually pulled few insects and there are a good number of rabbits coming around running into the bushes. So they are acting as pollinating uh, agents and then they are gradually, shrubs are coming up and we are throwing some seeds pertaining to the tree species. Now gradually we are trying to develop that ecosystem. So that, this was just an example of that what uh, companies are doing on the basis of uh, improving the biodiversity. But set apart, uh, we conserve water like when a rainwater harvesting setup on an Ennicat now as which is now very much uh, banned by the government. But Ennicats and other places they also are developing ecosystems in the locality. Earlier it was a flowing water, now it has been stopped. So it has developed an ecosystem nearby. Now when we say the economic value of this ecosystem coming up then we see the number of uh, fishes come into the Ennicats. There are number of places where you find the agriculture product nearby growing up and you find people propagating uh, different kinds of uh, businesses all, uh, around the area which has got water. So uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that the biodiversity in, in a very broader form is there in each and every piece of uh, business. And just for an example, like it's a, uh, example like if there's a woodcutter for making a furniture and if there's a carpenter. Now if a woodcutter can cut a tree and there's no carpenter, it doesn't have any value. So if you see that correlation of the human setup and the uh, biological setup, we all are related to each other. So uh, as a mining company, as we are from that particular setup, we do mine, we do carry out uh, some activities which are against the environmental uh, 
practices. But what we do is on a long run, even at the decommissioning stage or the rehabilitation stage, the biodiversity is there very much in our whole complete project life cycle. So what we are trying to uh, emphasize on this point is that the biodiversity on an economic value for the future communities or the future time when it would come up, when we are out of that project, then also it will play a very major role in the improvement of the area and in improving the basics like food and water. Thank you.